and greetings. It is August the 16th, 2015, and I'm back in the studio. Um, I was, uh, ran, well, I didn't run into a problem, but as I'm now getting down to the point where I need to shape the Kilson, um, remembering that we've just gone through the process of laying up the lamin, or the lamination of Douglas fir to create a wooden beam, 54 feet, 3 inches long, from which I have to still shape to actually get the shape of the kilson. At the bow, the uh, kilson tapers down to roughly 6 inches from 9 inches, or really 8. So they'll, it, you know, tapers in the front down to a smaller dimension. And so as I'm working all those details out, it was time to get back into the design phase to make sure that as I reduce that taper, that I don't reduce it too much. So, it brought me to kind of work through some decisions here. So, uh, as you see, there's a drawing of the front of the boat. This is my bow locker that I'm also calling the forward technical space. Um, this is a very large space compared to most boats. It is, let's see here, it is Let's see, from here to here, it's almost 10 feet long from the bow back to this bulkhead here. This bulkhead is a watertight bulkhead. I'm going to share some of my patented designs with you. So this is the Kilson here. And on the other side of this bulkhead will be the forward cabin. The forward cabin is the owner's cabin, which will be where I'm going to sleep. Maybe not on passage. But nonetheless, um, this will be the the, the the master statement here. So this bulkhead will be an inch and a half thick. It will be two sheets of marine grade plywood with a, I believe this is two inches. Let me just double check to make sure. Um, oh, oh God, that's not <laughs> All right. This is loud, people. All right. Let's double check that size. I think it's two inch insulation. Yeah, roughly two inch, two inch rigid insulation with another layer of sheetrock. Um, this will, you know, make this basically, you know, waterproof and soundproof. This here is a built up material. I'm not sure what I'm going to use yet, but it's what I'm encasing the bow thruster tunnel in. The reason why uh, I don't ever want any water to get behind here, so I'm building this up with some either cementious or um, some type of polymer it might be just wood chips filled i don't know what i'm going to do yet but i want this to be a um, monolithic fill a flowable fill so to speak that um, won't allow any water to get in here at all um, this is the kilson this here is blocking that goes from the watertight bulkhead to the frames each of these blue lines represent a frame inside the boat. Um, yeah, so bow, frame one, two, three, four, five. Frame five is the water type, the first water type boat. There are several in this boat. At any rate, since I'm now getting down to the, the details of the keelson and how it attaches to the stem. Uh, and this stem is actually two pieces, two two different types of material. I think the aft piece is going to be dug fir. The forward piece is African mahogany. The front of the boat is going to be left bright. Um, this little detail here. This is actually um, the dug fir. That's a, a blocking sort of a stiffener. This is the plywood for the hull. It comes, it fastens to this material here. And then this is the bright pieces. This this would be two layers of three quarter inch African mahogany, or if I can find uh, one and a half inch solid material, and this in here would be some type of some type of filler, probably the same thing for that I use. Or I'm thinking about switching to Western red cedar. It's got a better price point here. So for any of you who are watching, let me know what your thoughts are on Western red cedar. It's um, not as strong as a Douglas fir, but it's great 
for this area because this, like I said, this will be left right. You know, just epoxied very well, and then it will be, of course, um, finished bright with spar urethane. And so, great opportunity for water to get in here. So, the duck fur, at mahogany. Um, not really sure yet because I know there may be a, a difference in the coefficient of expansion if I use two different materials here, which could make these joints crack, and I don't want that. So, this may end up being a solid piece of African mahogany, but I'm not sure. But anyway, so that's how the bow will be finished. And so, anyway, when I'm working. On these details, there are a couple of things I needed to work through. This is the second, third, fourth, fifth design, perhaps, of the front of the boat. Initially, I did what most modern boats do. I had a chain locker and a sail locker. I decided, what the heck do I need all that for? I'll just do hoss pipes that feed chain and road down to a bin inside of my forward technical space. And this is a pretty big area here. This is roughly three feet. By four feet, uh, which is roughly three feet across. So, if you are looking, um, so roughly four feet by three feet, and so it'll be plenty of space for chain and road here to be fed by these two hoss pipes by windlass. And this windlass is drawn like this, but um, I may change the orientation. It may go instead of a board ship, it may go from half to forward uh, but I'm not sure yet but anyway the house pipes will drop the chain and road down into the bins here and the forward of the boat and so this is a different elevation of that same area so as you see along the sides of the hull I'll be able to store locker I mean store sails store anchors uh, that's my interpretation of a rock now of course, a fisherman, just because I don't ever plan to have a fisherman, but I think it illustrates well <laughs> what will be used in that space. So this represents this space here. I mean, look how long it is. It's, you know, shoot, five feet to hang different items on to store. This is almost seven feet tall here. This is shelving also against the, the back wall. The shelving... Uh, doubles as a ship's ladder to get out of the locker. Um, you know, in my mid 40s, be 50 by the time I'm cruising, so don't want to be struggling too much. So I've got a slight bevel to that. A uh, very large hatch on the deck here. Um, this indicates this is the hinged, the hinged part. It folds up. I want a minimum of four inches between this and bulwarks, the bulwarks which will be uh, two and a quarter inches in total. Um, it's basically uh, a sheet of plywood from the hull that's got a three quarter inch piece of after mahogany on the inside and outside which makes it actually wider than it's shown here. But this is the inch and a half dimension from the hull inward. There's another piece on the outside. You know, but at any rate, it also doubles as a rub, rub rail, I guess. And so, you know, great hatch here. Initially, the design had two hatches, like I said, one for the chain locker, one for the, um, the sail locker. And the windlass was actually sunken. I think I have drawings to show that. Let's turn on the layer. See if you can see it. Yeah. So, look at this old, this black line. This was the old bow of the boat. And here you can see this was the chain lock and this was the sail locker here. Um, and as you see, this was the hoss pipe before, and this is where the windlass was. And I simply just did not want a windlass or to have to contend with the windlass inside the boat. You know, basically, I'll be able to get the chain to where it needs to be without opening the boat. And I just didn't want that extra area exposed where the windlass would be beneath deck so we'll get a very hefty beefy windlass to put on top of the deck and let's show you some other details here um, let's zoom in. so again valve thrust tunnel ah okay here's another problem I ran into initially 
uh, when this boat was designed, it was four feet shorter. So the end of the boat was somewhere around here, which gave me a good um, amount of depth at the bow of the boat um, where the stem was. The stem was at least oh, a good foot and a half, you know, beneath the waterline, which is here. Since we extended it four feet, it kept at the same angle which makes the entry, you know, basically almost, a, you know, this curve will still be above water, whereas before it was beneath the water. At any rate, it reduces the amount of wetted surface, which is good for me in terms of sailing. <laughs> but what it does is this, most of the bow thrusters that I looked at require the center of the bow thruster tube to be about a foot below the water line. And so in order for me to get this tube a foot below the waterline, it's set, you know, center below the waterline, it has to be, gosh darn, nearly 11 feet back in the boat, which won't make it a very efficient bow thruster because this tube at that point will be about 8 feet long, which is ridiculous. So, in my research, I found stern thrusters that don't require that much submersion beneath the waterline, only 4 inches. Um, this is where I'm coming to you guys. Do you know of bow thrusters that work without, with a relative, you know, shallow, um, you know, center line beneath the water line? Um, I don't want to do a bow thruster that retracts because I wanted to keep my beautiful um, <laughs> Kielsen intact. I didn't want to have to cut a hole in it to drop a piece of equipment through. I want to keep this very simple. A retractable bow thruster or something else that will break. So if any of you have ever fitted out a boat or know anything about bow thrusters, again, at this location here where it's designed, it's um, about nine feet back from the bow. Again, this is still relatively very small, not small bow, but it's it's thin at that point. Okay. Um, I guess it's about right here. So that's still pretty long. That's probably that's six feet. There'll still be a six feet tunnel, or maybe a little bit shorter than a six foot tunnel in here. Um, you know, ideally it would be like right here with just a three or four foot tunnel, but I really don't have any, any depth. That location, I mean, look, it's just you know, very little here. Well, so if you guys know of any bow thrusters that will work with that little bit of dimension, please let me know. Um, so, again, more detail the chain locker uh, in the front, this little cabinet here will have weep holes on both sides to allow any water that does migrate into the hoss pipes to drain out above the water line. Uh, there's a forward sump pump with discharge again above the waterline. This is the um, side view of that. Again, um, and the way the boat's designed, I will have several watertight bulkheads. Um, the, the, the forward cabin itself, this is the forward bulkhead. The aft bulkhead in the master uh, cabin will also be a watertight bulkhead. It will have a a door on it or hatch <laughs> um, that will be able to be sealed to make the entire forward cabin also watertight bulkhead so there'll be a se separate uh, sump pump in that area and um, there's will be a sump pump amidships and then one in the rear um, because there are also bulkheads there so those are my questions for you one bow thruster that would work without a lot of submersion and let's see, what was my second question? My other question. Oh, here it is. Um, the marina that I want to keep my boat requires your boat to be exactly what you say it is. For instance, I want a 55 foot slip. That means my boat cannot be, including any anchors or anything else, more than, um, you know, 55 feet long. So this bow is 54 feet. So I didn't want to put an anchor on the bow that would put in jeopardy my ability to actually get the slip that I wanted. 
So I've got bow, bow rollers that don't extend very far off the boat. I was looking at a retractable roller, bow roller, but that didn't work out like I wanted to. It took too much space. And again, I've um, modeled most of what I'm doing after the rock nut. This is a sketch of the rock nut that I drew myself that I got the dimensions off of their website. And that's basically at 42 inches by about almost 18 inches uh, tall. Um, so yeah, I didn't want to, you know, ex extend beyond what they would allow me to be in that bird. So my plan is to, when I'm at, you know, local, where I will keep the boat, to just take the anchor off, put it down in the beautiful little chain locker, <laughs> and attach it when I go out to anchor. But what I'm looking at here is a, the stem head fitting that connects the the Genoa, uh, because there'll be Genoa, and then there'll be probably a staysail somewhere in here, or a full jib in here. I'm, I'm thinking about running the, the solvent rig with, again, the Genoa attached to the stem, and maybe two feet away will be where the um, actual, not staysail, but the actual jib will be will be here, kind of around here somewhere. Um, so I did want to do a standard bow bow roller that kind of gets in the way here. So I'm thinking about doing two separate ones. One, which would be a secondary bow roller for any moorings or secondary anchors or whatever, and the primary bow roller, just a four inch piece of stainless steel channel. Uh, of course, bolted uh, to the deck and to blocking beneath uh, with just a single bow, just a single roller here, and of course, the upper rollers to capture the chain and the anchor when it's when it, when it is affixed uh, that will come back to the swimless. Um, and this one again secondary. And so I'm thinking about the you know the way this is, the way it's set up and how the windlass is set up. Um, I know that they have you know windlasses that can take both uh, rope road and chain. So I'm thinking about that whole configuration. Should it be this way? Should it be uh, forward to aft. So I really, and of course, the Samson, the Samson, well, she, you gotta have a Samson plus man. It's just old school. <laughs> Instead of cleats. At any rate, so that's what I could use your help with today. Uh, bow thrusters that don't have to be, uh, submerged that far. And the layout of the forward deck here. Um, what do you think about the, the separate bow rollers? Uh, one primary, one secondary. Um, you see there's a difference in the length because I figured, you know, this one doesn't have to be as beefy. Do you think they both should be the same length? Do um, you think I should just have the one the center line? Um, yeah. So that's about it for today. Uh, taking care of design issues so I don't have to redo <laughs> all of that work with the Kielsen. So... Please like and share these videos, and I hope you're having a fantastic end to your summer. Get some sailing done, and please comment and share your thoughts. I really appreciate all the feedback. I mean, I'm learning a lot from you guys. I know somebody made, made a comment and said, oh, well, you don't need me. No, I do need you, just because I, I may have thought through uh, one or two things that uh, you may have thought about as well. Believe me, I need the input. Um, so please like and share the videos. And until next time, peace and blessings.